welcome back to the best apps of the month for May 2025. First up, EdgeSeek. It's totally free, open source, and so handy. Basically, if I swipe from the top left edge of my screen, boom, volume control. Swipe from the top right, brightness slider. And if I double tap either side, notification shade drops down. The best part is that it doesn't mess with the regular back gesture too, which makes it super seamless and intuitive to use. Oh, and you can also tweak everything inside the app. Gestures, sensitivity, actions, you name it. Okay, moving on. This is a Google Pixel. Wait, no, it's an Oppo. Actually, nope, it's a nothing phone. Psych, it's actually been my Samsung phone the entire time, just mirroring all my other devices. Pretty wild, right? With screen copy for Android, you can literally mirror any Android phone onto your main device, even controlling it remotely. It's super useful if you wanna cast your phone to a bigger screen, like a tablet or a foldable, or if you're wanting to take a photo of yourself and need to trigger the camera from afar. Oh, and stick around to the end because I'll show you exactly how to set it up. Thumbs up if you want that. And hey, that's just two out of the 15 apps in this month's roundup of the best Android apps. Crazy to think that I've been doing this series for over 10 years, and honestly, I'm still one of the few YouTubers left who's still doing it. So if you've been watching for a while and still love this series, smash that like button and drop a comment to keep me motivated. Let's hit 10,000 likes, because honestly, your support seriously means the world to me and it helps me keep going. Thanks guys. Anyway, here I've got my Pixel rocking a full on nothing inspired theme. And get this, none of these widgets require the KWGT app or any other app to run. Just plop them on your home screen and they're ready to go. The app behind this is called Everything Widgets, only costing a dollar and you get over a hundred nothing style widgets to choose from. I'm talking clocks, music players, quick setting toggles, photo frames, weather, even weird ones like a calculator, truth or dare, or a snake game widget. They're all resizable too and perfectly symmetrical, plus they follow your phone's dark theme and look really clean. My favorite one is the custom app launcher widget because I can link any app to it, set a custom icon for it, and boom, a pill-shaped icon. It's really nice and unique. Oh, and for those matching nothing icons, the same developer made a pack called End Thing Icons that nails the nothing look. It's two bucks, but it's the closest replication that I've found to nothing's icons. All right, next up is an app called Sephira, and this one's actually pretty cool. It's free, open source, and kind of feels like an alternative to the KDE Connect app if you ever use that. Basically, it lets your Android and your Windows PC talk to each other, like really talk to each other. You can do stuff like send messages, control your phone's notifications from your PC, copy something on your phone and paste it on your computer or the other way around, share files super easily between the two, and even control your PC's media playback and volume from your phone. Oh, and this part really blew my mind. You can wirelessly sync your phone storage to your desktop. Uh, like actual file access, no cables needed. Now, full transparency, it's not perfect yet. It's still relatively new, only coming out a couple of months ago, and it definitely runs smoother on some devices than others. Still, when it works, it works really well. I can totally see this getting way better in the future too, and it already shows a lot of promise. Definitely give it a try. Okay, let's be real for a sec. If you're someone like me who just can't stop doom scrolling and productivity apps just don't do the trick, well, what if you just doom scrolled games instead? That's where this app called Swick comes in. It's like TikTok, but for mini games. Open it and bam, instant game. Don't like it? Swipe to the next one in seconds. There's a ton of variety too. Racing games, puzzles, platformers, even little sports games. And if you find one that you actually like, you can give it a thumbs up so it shows up again later. It's also completely free with just a few ads Massive shout out to the developer who goes by MiserableAd3089 on Reddit, who was the actual one who dropped this gem on my subreddit, How To Men. As of May 1st, the app only has around 100 downloads, so I definitely wouldn't have stumbled across it otherwise. If you also have an app you created or just want to recommend me one, just post it on my Reddit page, and if I choose it, I'll give you a shout out in the next episode. Okay, here's something useful for those of you who are on Linux or Mac OS. You know how Google made that quick share program for Windows, which lets you wirelessly send files between your phone and your PC seamlessly. Super convenient, but yeah, not available for anything else besides Android or Windows. Well, now it is. 
our quick share brings that same quick share functionality over to Mac and Linux, and it actually works pretty well. The setup's pretty straightforward too. On Mac, you'll just need to allow a permission in your security settings. On Linux, you'll just need to install a library, which are mentioned on the app's GitHub page, but once you've done that, you're good to go. Works like a charm. AI apps are everywhere, but most either limit you or charge you to use. Not Adma. This app is made by an indie developer and it's a totally free AI image upscaler. So if you have a crappy low resolution image, you can throw it in there and it'll try to upscale it. No watermarks, no daily limits, no locked features. Just pick a photo and it sharpens it like magic. Now there are ads of course, but here's the cool part, the upscaling works offline. So if the ads bother you that much, you can literally just flip on airplane mode and they're gone. All right, so these next two apps are just for those who are rooted and have a Google Pixel. If that's not you, feel free to skip ahead, but if it is you, you're in for a treat. First up is a super cool LSPOS module called Pixel Launcher Enhanced. And yeah, the name kind of gives it away. It basically unlocks all the stuff that Google won't let you tweak in the stock Pixel Launcher. For starters, you can actually ditch that at a glance widget and even remove the search bar if you want a cleaner home screen. So much more room for widgets or just peace. You can also force themed icons for every app, even ones that usually ignore it like TikTok or Netflix. And the best part is that you can expand the grid size to 10 by 10 instead of the usual five by five. That's huge. If you do that though, you'll want to shrink the icon sizes a bit so that they don't overlap with each other. But don't worry, this module also lets you adjust all that too. You can also hide apps, force themed icons in the app drawer, and even unlock this hidden developer options menu within the launcher settings that's usually only for Google employees. That one gives you access to wild stuff like launching a secondary display. And that's just scratching the surface. This thing has a ton of features. If you're rooted and rocking a pixel, this one's a must. Another root only gem is Android 16 Expressive Theme. This LSBOS mod unlocks this hidden feature that's buried in the new Android 16 beta update. Once it's on, your system settings get a full redesign. Like the icons on the main page are way more colorful and the sub menus have these new section dividers with bold background highlights. Even the small stuff got an upgrade, like switches and sliders now follow the Material U aesthetic way more closely. It just feels a lot more modern and put together. If you're on Android 16 Beta 3 or 4 or even Android 15 QPR2, you can still flash this and get a sneak peek of what Google's been working on. Highly recommend it. Okay, let's be honest, most of us barely use Facebook these days, but we still keep the app installed just in case someone from the family tags us in something or we want to peek in once in a blue moon. But man, that app is a storage hog, almost 600 megabytes on my end. And it's kind of sketchy too with a ton of trackers. Well, enter Notebook, a lightweight alternative to the Facebook app that's under 10 megabytes big. Yup, 10. And it still lets you do all the basic stuff. Post stuff, check your feed, watch reels, browse the marketplace, all of it. But here's the best part. It removes all the ads, all the suggested posts, and it's open source too. So you're getting the same core Facebook experience just without all the bloatware and nonsense. So if you're still hanging on to the OG app, this is your sign to finally let it go. If you're the type who spends way too much time tweaking your home screen, guilty, Creative App is your new obsession. It's basically a hub for everything customization. You need fresh new widgets, new icon packs, uh, sick wallpapers, this is where you'll find it all. It's kind of like a community space too. You can see other people's home screen setups, complete with the exact apps that they use to build them. And if you're sharing your own setup, they've even got mock-up tools with realistic Android device frames, so your screenshots look extra polished. You can also follow users or creators you vibe with and stay up to date on their drops. It's a goldmine for tweakers out there. Not those kinds of tweakers. All right, so CurioMate is like that one junk drawer in your house, except actually useful. It's packed with over 25 random but handy tools. You've got stuff like a QR code generator for text or URLs, a Pomodoro timer for breaking up your work sessions, PDF tools, an invoice generator, a decibel meter, the list goes on. Now, obviously, you might not use every single tool in this app, but I'm willing to bet that there are at least a few in there that'll make you go, okay, that's actually useful. It's $2 on the Play Store, but shout out to the developer for giving me 100 promo codes to give away on my Patreon. 
So if you want to grab it without spending anything, definitely go check it out over there. Now, I don't usually review KWGT packs anymore because honestly, most of them kind of blend together. Plus my team already makes some killer widget packs, which you should definitely check out on my Patreon. We've got over a hundred, all super customizable and material you friendly. But recently, one alternative did really catch my eye. It's called Fluffy KWGT, costing a dollar, and they all have this really unique 3D style material design look. The widgets look like they're popping right out of the screen. It's such a refreshing change from the flat designs that we usually see in Android. Even though the vibe is kind of playful and neomorphic, it still sticks to that material you language with rounded corners and dynamic color matching based on your wallpaper. It's super clean. Okay, confession, I miss Pixel Screenshot app now that I'm on a Galaxy. I used to rely on it all the time for organizing screenshots into categories like gift ideas or product links. And now that I'm on the Galaxy S25 Ultra, all 500 screenshots, and I'm not, I'm not joking, I literally have over 500 screenshots, are scattered throughout my gallery in a complete mess. Luckily, I just came across Pixel Shots. It basically brings that same smart screenshot organization to any Android device. It pulls all your screenshots into one place, and then it lets you organize them into different categories, or just let you delete the ones that you don't want which is huge for me because like I said, I've got well over 500 screenshots on my phone and for whatever reason, Samsung likes to put them all together in the same photos that I take with the regular camera. I don't know why. It even summarizes screenshots and scans for text. So when I search for something specific, it actually finds what I'm looking for. The only thing it doesn't do is put the web page links onto the screenshot if you take a screenshot within the browser like the Pixel does. But other than that, it's a pretty spot on alternative. Digipause is another one you're gonna love because it's going to really help you stay productive. That's if the Swick app at the very beginning where you can swipe through games doesn't work. For instance, anytime I hop into Instagram Reels, TikTok or YouTube Shorts and start scrolling, uh, this app now puts a big number onto the screen showing me exactly how many videos I've scrolled through for the day. Or I can even add a live stopwatch showing me how much time has elapsed since I started scrolling. It's pretty useful because you don't really notice how much you're scrolling until it's right there in your face, you know? Plus the number doesn't even reset if I switch apps. It keeps counting all of my short form video binges no matter which app I'm using. It only resets once it hits midnight. All right, like I promised, here's how to set up the screen copy for Android app so you can mirror one device to another. First things first, make sure both phones are connected to the same Wi-Fi network, that's key. Then you'll need to enable the developer options on both phones. If you're not sure how to do that, don't worry, I've got the steps up on the screen for you. Once that's done, head into the developer options and turn on wireless debugging on both devices. Now you need to get your computer for a second because we're going to run a quick ADB command. If you don't have ADB installed yet, just go to this Android developer website, I've linked it below, and then download the SDK platform tools for your operating system. I'm on Windows, so I click that, scroll to the bottom, check the little box to agree to the terms and downloaded the zip file. After that, I unzipped the file, opened it up and inside the platform tools subfolder, I just clicked on the address bar and then I typed in CMD and hit enter. That'll open up the command prompt right where you need it. Now just connect your Android phone to the computer. When you plug it in, a little pop-up should show up on your phone asking if you want to allow USB debugging. Go ahead and tap allow. Then in the command prompt, just type this command, adb tcpip 5555. After that, hit enter and you should be good. Now you're gonna wanna do the same thing for the other phone. Okay, now we're done with the computer. So now you're gonna wanna grab the phone that you want to mirror. On that phone, you'll want to go into the developer options menu and then go into the wireless debugging menu. You'll see an IP address listed there. Take a note of that IP address and on the other phone, the one that you want to control the other one with, open the Scrappy for Android app and type that same exact IP in. I would also recommend lowering the resolution and setting the bit rate to around two megabits per second because that really helps reduce lag, especially if you have a budget device. Once you've got all that set, just tap on start, allow the USB debugging prompt on the other phone and boom, you should now be mirroring and even controlling the other device. And if it doesn't work, just try restarting the apps and then opening them up again and hitting start. Yeah, the first time setups is a bit of a hassle, but once it's done, you're good to go. From then on, you can just tap on start and it'll connect right away. 
Just keep in mind though, that if either phone gets restarted, you need to run this setup all over again. So make sure to bookmark or save this video for next time. Anyways, tap on this video right here to binge all the past best Android episodes of the month, or check out this one to see how you can still get unlimited Google photo storage for free. Drop a thumbs up if I helped you find at least one dope app. And as always, thanks for watching till the end and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!